Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and attack the Outrun again. We're just gonna fix some uh, spare boards. Uh, hopefully we can get at least one done today. You can see here that the screen is kind of just blank. I have uh, that untested board we put in the last episode. It's still blank. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, you know, run some tests, maybe put some mem tests on it, um, and then kind of see what uh, things we need to replace, maybe socket some stuff, and uh, see if we can get this thing running. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here, I think, is just throw it into test mode. Uh, we're not getting anything. Not really sure. It could be a CPU issue. could be some ROM issue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and press it. Let's see. And if you guys remember this from the last episode, it didn't really work right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the memory test. And we'll click it again. So right now it's testing everything. You'll see the screen flash when it gets to the other test, like right there. So it looks like all the ICs are good except for 76 and 75. Um, those, I believe, I have to double check, but they may be um, EEPROMs that I can just test. And then the RAM itself, you have all those good except for 55 and 54. So I'm gonna probably replace those. I'll socket those out. I do have that RAM in stock, I checked. Uh, so in the meantime, let's try to get these. We'll do one thing at a time and just replace that. I'm gonna remove 76 and 75 for the EEPROMs and we'll kind of test it to see where, uh, what's happening here. Okay, so I kind of wrote down what it was. We have 75 and 76 and a 54 and 55. So I'm looking here and 74 and 75 are these two. I'm sorry, 75 and 76 are these two right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove them. I'm going to test them in my uh, ROM tester. What I'm going to do is just like we did in the last episode, we're going to dump these two out uh, onto the desktop and then you use a utility uh, where you compare it online. So I'll show you guys how to do that. And then 54 and 55, unfortunately, it's on the other side. So it's a really big pain. You have to take the whole thing off, take the whole thing apart, get to the chips and then put it back together. You actually can't have it um, running because sometimes you can piggyback, like on the RAM over here, you can piggyback stuff to see if it's working, um, if it's bad, but it turns out the RAM is on the other side of the board on this other one here and you can't do it at the same time. Uh, there is a guy that has hinges. I'm trying to get them so I can at least have this open. Um, so I can kind of have it hinged up this way uh, supported and then I can kind of just work on the board while it's on and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I haven't, he really hasn't contacted me. It's been, I guess a couple years now and, um, I'm not sure if he doesn't want to share them or he doesn't want to support, you know, making new ones. But I really do, if you know anyone who has these hinges, it's basically an interface board that goes there to the other side and kind of gives it like a ribbon cable so you can kind of flip it upside down so you can work on the two boards at the same time while it's on. But right now it's kind of impossible to do that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these two chips. It's already off. I'm just going to take it out. Um, I'm going to test it. So this one here, I believe is, I'm looking here, it's 75. So that's 75. And this is 76 right over here. And it's good to go. And we'll see, maybe it just needs to be reseated. Uh, but in the meantime, you know what, let's check them. So EPR10328 um, is on the top, and then EPR10327 is on the bottom, and it runs parallel to these. So I'm going to go ahead and test these two, and we'll just take it from there. We're not going to do the RAM yet. We're just going to see how these work, and then um, you know what I should do? I should pop in the chips on my board into here really quick and see if it works. Let's do that, uh, and then I'll see why these were bad. Okay, so what I did was I took my two chips right here on my working board set, pop them in there just to see if it'll work um, instead of having to figure out if that's what the problem was. And let's see if these two errors go away. Um, if that's the case, I can just burn two new ROMs, but I'm curious if the other ones that were in there were corrupt as well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, close this up, we'll push it in, and then we'll see what's going on in the front when we turn it on. Okay, so we're back at the front of the machine. I have the um, those ROMs in there and I'm gonna turn it on. Let's see what happens here. Looks like it's still a blank screen there. I'm gonna go into test mode. I'm just curious to see if that helped it any. So let's see here. Uh, memory test actually went backwards. <laughs> so it still says IC75 and IC76 are bad, along with 58 now is bad. So, um, 
I think something else is going on. It's probably some um, memory for those EPROMs. Could be the CPU is bad. Because um, usually, if the CPU is good, it'll actually boot into the game. This isn't doing anything. So um, I do have extra CPUs. So let's go ahead and we'll test those memory things, 75 and 76. We'll see what's going on. That 58 wasn't like that before. I'm actually going to pop the other RAM in now, and I'll just double check it. And I'll let you guys know if 58 was good or bad, putting it back. Okay, so we have the uh, GQ4X software open here. And um, you can see it's already set to M27C512. That's the ones uh, that these are here. And it's, uh, I'm gonna do EPR10328. That's the one in the 75 position. And then I'll do 76 later, but I'm popping this in there. And I'm just gonna hit read. And sometimes it'll have trouble reading it. And that's a sign right there too, but it looks like it's reading it okay so even though it reads it it still may be corrupt so we're actually gonna put it here i'm gonna just put it on my desktop here and we're gonna name it um 103 28 test dot 76 oh 75 and then i'm gonna make this all files so it writes it correctly and then you'll see it right here looks good and then see how it put dot bin on the end of it? It's not really supposed to do that. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you want to change it? Yes. Okay. And then the second one, it's going to pop that in here too. I'm doing this off camera. And we're going to hit read again. And then we'll save that to the desktop once it's done. It says read complete. So I'm going to name this one. Uh, 10327.76 Hit save And this time it did it correctly So I must have not selected it right before Alright, so we can close this We're done with that So now that we have these two files You can go to Ramadent uh, uh, Checksum, it's a website And I'll put a link in the description, of course And basically You just select the browse file And it, com it kind of tells you what it is for MAME So this is really good to identify stuff too if you want to know what board it is so i'm double clicking here selecting that file the first one here hitting submit and it looks like it's okay to be honest it looks good um if it if it was corrupt and stuff i wouldn't even recognize it here and it says that it's from uh outrun a or b i believe b is here yep and it's 103 28a that's exactly what it is right here so that one seems okay. It's a sub CPU region. That's actually a good clue to tell you that it could be the CPUs that are bad and the ROM is fine. So it looks like the ROM is okay. Another way of checking it is you can actually load it and I'll show you in a minute. Um, let me go ahead and go back and you could donate to this guy. It's really good. I use this all the time. I really should donate. Um, you're going to click browse and we'll go to the second one, which is 76. I'm going to hit submit. And this one is also found, so that means the checksum checked out right here, and that it probably is a good file. And again, it's a sub-CPU area, so I'm guessing because we swapped it out with good ones from the other version, I think there's something going on possibly with the CPU. So I wonder if I should swap them out first before I begin all that desoldering and stuff with the RAM. Um, okay, so that confirmed that, so I think they're good. Um, so I'm going to take them out, put them on the side. But let's go ahead and check something now. I actually have the file here. I just grabbed it from my main machine over there. Uh, we own the game, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so I'm actually going to right click and 7-zip, and I'm just going to extract the Outrun folder here. So you can kind of kill this. You don't need it anymore. And then inside, you'll see we're going to look for EPR10328. So EPR10328.75. And there it is, 10327A.76. So these are the two files we need. So what I'm going to do, um, you can actually open up your burning software. And I'm going to go ahead and put in 103.28.75. I'm actually putting the chip in there. So this is if you, for whatever reason, you don't have internet access, um, you can't get to that site, and you want to double check it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load that file in there. So I'm going to the desktop, I'm typing in outrun, 
and I'm looking for the file that I just want here, which is 75. So 10328, 75. I'm going to open that and hit OK. See, it's loaded right here. And now you can actually verify it. And when you verify it, it's actually taking what's just loaded into the buffer, what I just loaded, and it's comparing it to the actual chip that I have inside the burner. So now I'm going to go ahead and click verify. And it's going to take this buffer and compare it to what I have inside the actual chip itself. And if it verifies OK, which I think it did, let's go to the message log here. Device is verified. I'm going to try one more time. See, it's verifying against the buffer, which we just loaded. And it seems to be OK. Now, as an example, if you want to see what happens when something's wrong, I'm actually going to stick in the other chip. So 10327.76, I'm going to stick that one in and I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to change what I loaded. I'm going to hit verify and this is what happens. That'll happen if it's bad. So in this case, it's good. It just has the wrong thing loaded. So I'm going to leave it in there. I'm going to load the other one. 76 right there. Okay. And now I'm going to hit verify and it should verify fine because that is the correct file comparing it to my actual chip. So that's another way of doing it if you don't want to go to the website. Um, so it looks like these two are fine. Um, I, by the way, I put in 58 earlier. Um, remember it said it was bad when I put those other chips in there? I put the originals, these, right here back in and then tried it again and it said 58 was fine. So um, I'm pretty sure it's fine. So I'm pretty confident these ROMs are fine. So I'm going to pop them back in and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out the CPU and put replacements in there and try to figure out um, I'll do one at a time just to see what's what, but those are the CPUs on those look kind of old to me. They look a little different than the ones I have. So let's go ahead, go back to the machine. We'll pull them off and then we'll pop the other ones back in. Okay, so we're back at the machine. I'm actually going to take this right here, 28. And actually, I'm going to put in 27 first, just easier. Make sure the notch is facing to the right. And let's just go ahead and pop that in there. There's one. These pop in pretty easy compared to other boards. Um, let me just double check that. All right, so those are in there. So I'm going to take one of these out. And I do have replacement chips. I have them right here. These, I believe, are uh, Motorola MC68000 P12. So uh, the ones in here, looks like it's uh, 68000, and it doesn't really say the megahertz. Um, this is, or not really the megahertz, but I think like the nanoseconds, I forget. But anyway, these are P12s. They should work fine. They've worked fine in other machines I've tried. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove this. Now this one, since it's a really long chip, it might need some more coaxing so you won't bend the pins. So you're going to have to grab it. I'm trying not to get in the way here. But you can actually just uh, pull these out slowly. That one looks okay. All right, and none of the pins are broken. I'm just looking at them. And you could see pin one is actually, since all of them have notches, pin one is facing that way. You could see there's like a little like thing here that signifies that that's pin one. So it should face that way and same thing over here. But I'm gonna switch. No, I feel like switching both of them out because I feel they may be different um, CPU types. Yeah, let me do both of them. I was going to do one at a time, but the fact that they may be different um, brands or whatnot, yeah, I didn't really take that one out too even there. Let's try that now. All right, so this one is okay. It doesn't look like there's any pins broken. Everything looks fine here. All right, so I'll put that on the left and right so I know. And I would advise taking the whole board off to put these on because sometimes they don't snap in right. Let me just double check that they're okay. Yep, these are them. So these do have the little notches on them just like the EEPROMs do, so that's gonna face to the right. So I'm gonna make sure that they're in there. Sometimes they're a little too wide, like this one. So you gotta just bend them because they're new. <laughs> All right. So again, if you really want to do it the right way, you want to take them out. 
And these look like machined sockets. They're, they don't look like the uh, double wipe ones, but they're a little different to get everything in there. And this, you can see the door is just like not cooperating right now. So double checking here. Before I press it in all the way, I'm gonna look underneath. I'm actually gonna grab my flashlight. Let me just get situated here. It's kind of a tight spot I'm in. And yep, everything's in right. So now I can push it in. And I've had CPUs that got loose. <laughs> And when you push them back in, that's the thing. If you have this separated nice and flat, you can just really push down on it. But in this case, I can't really do that. So it's kind of hard. All right, so I have it set up here. I'm just gonna double check my work. Before I take it out, I actually separated it, took the other board out. So that way I have more leverage here. And let me see here, let me just double check what I'm doing. Okay. So that's it right there. And yeah, now I can really feel that it's going in. See, there's a lot of force. You heard that click? Now that's definitely in there. So I'm just double checking to make sure nothing got bent. All right, so that's in there pretty good. And now I'll just take the other one out. And just double check it again. It's the right model, yep. And it's gonna be facing that way. So let me see if it can go in this way. I'm just looking really quickly. Let me take this, move it. And actually, I didn't have to bend this one. This one looks good. Just make sure it's all lined up before you press it. Looks good. And now, nice and easy all right so that's in there pretty confident both were good so now i got to put it all back together <laughs> like i said a little bit of a pain but you know gotta do it so i'm just taking this right here and this right here popping it on right there one two and three All right, so this is ready to go. Let me go ahead and pop it back in there and see what happens. Okay, so we have it open here and let's turn it on and see what happens. My guess is it's about the same. Yep. So it could be those RAMs. So I guess what we'll do, we're back to the drawing board. Let me go back in the test menu here. So it wasn't the CPUs. But since I had them on hand, I was just shotgunning it. Why not, right? So memory test. Good, good, good. Okay. All right, so it looks like 75, 76 are still bad. And then we have, uh, it looks like 54, 55 are bad too. Those are the same. Okay, so it hasn't changed at all with the new CPUs in there. So at least we know that the other CPUs are okay. So let me go ahead and uh, take this thing apart again. Um, you know, before I do that, let's go ahead and stick in the RAM test. I have a RAM test ROM set that I made, um, and you'll see in previous videos how I used it, just to see what else is bad. We'll kind of take an inventory on what's good and what's bad. It puts it more, um, because it doesn't really show all the RAM here. Um, and the other one, it shows a lot more, you'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stick those in, um, and then come back to this screen right here, and we'll kind of test it and see what happens. All right, guys, so I have the RAM. I'm just gonna show you real, real quick here. Uh, so this is it right here. I actually burned them myself. Um, he has them. These are completely, since they're, they're the guy's own code and everything, he actually provides the whole thing. You just gotta burn them. You don't have to compile them or anything. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description. And these test ROMs are so cool. It actually puts it through an extensive test. You're replacing 133, 118, 75, and 76. So those are the two that have problems. So we'll see what happens when we put this in, what it comes up with, with the, um, you know, with the RAM test and stuff. So it's kind of cool. So let me go ahead. I'm going to pop these in now. So this is 58. Hey, I see a bent pin. Check that out. See that? Looks like it's broken. 
Oh no, it's actually bent. So I wonder if this is the issue. Because <laughs> those did have to do with the sub CPU area. Um, hmm, well, let me show you guys. I'll actually go up here and show you. So I took this out and I noticed that this here was bent. Can you see that? Yes, wait. Yeah, so that's bent up. This pin right there. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, hmm, I'm really test, tempted to test it out or just to bend it back carefully because you can bend that back if you really want to. All right, I'll put it on the side for now. It's not a big deal. And uh, <clears throat> all right, so 133, 118, 76, and 58. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll move this back. I'm going to turn it on. We'll switch camera angles and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're back. I'm actually, I turned it on and I think if I recall, it goes straight to the test menu. Yeah, it does. So, so far it's saying everything's okay. It repeats over and over. So if you missed anything at the beginning, we can always use it again. But so far, everything's okay. It's giving me an error on, looks like Sprite IC51. Restarting and, okay. So it looks like those memory slots are fine. What was it, 55 and 56? It's saying it's okay. Hmm. All right, so it's having a problem on the sprites uh, IC51. That's on the second board, of course. So, pretty promising that it only has that one error. So, let me see if you guys can see this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That way you can see what's going on. So we'll kind of just test the board. So you can see here it's IC51. And I'm just going to let it run again just to see what's happening. So these are the road ones, by the way, if you're, if you're ever curious. Oops, it'll show you exactly where the road ones are, tile maps. So it looks like sprites are messed up. So it's possible that's why it's not, it's, it has like a gray screen. I don't think you can go into test mode here. I'm going to try. I've never tried it, I don't think. Let's see. No, nothing works. So it goes straight into this test mode. So I'll have to double check, but there were, I know there were two other RAM chips that were, um, it said was bad and I was ready to have them because I had them in, on hand here and um i did have some sockets where i wanted to take them out but if it's not that you know again we're just kind of shotgunning it a little bit just by swapping chips but uh normally you'd put a you know a probe a logic probe on there but because you can't open it at the same time that it's on it's almost impossible to get a logic probe in there <laughs> to do what you got to do um so what does it say i see I see 51. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try piggybacking. I've done it before where I piggyback something, put it back together, you know, you hold it in there with a piece of electrical tape, and then we'll see if the graphics improve. And if they do, then you can go ahead and swap it out. But that doesn't always work. But we can give it a shot. We'll try that. And of course, I go to check my inventory, and I do not have those chips in stock. Now, there's two different chips. Um, I'm going to quickly grab the other board. But on top of the board... Uh, there's IC51 over here. Let me see if I can find it off camera here. Yeah, so if the board goes together like this, right? I'm actually going to kind of put it in, but not really. Okay, so if it goes together like that, IC51 is right here. Um, but I'm not sure if that has to do with sprites at all. Um, or could be this one over here. Uh, the IC51 is here and this is the video board um, So the CPU and the CPU board is right here and that's the video board So it could be this one. I'm suspecting that it's this one right here um, I don't have that one. I actually have TMM 2063A that's the ones up here um, But I don't have that one and these these were a little pricey. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I have other boards I have like six other board sets that are broken <laughs> So instead of uh, ordering it right now, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to grab, I have a turbo outrun here. Let's see if I can find it here. 
This one is from, yeah, this is a Turbo Outrun, um, where this thing is just hosed. It says no good on it, and uh, it's written in, looks like Japanese there. So I think I'm going to steal from this board. You know, I originally wanted to get it to work, but um, I see 51. Where was it on this board? Oh, these are two different ones. Hang on. So 51 would be right there. So if I have it oriented the right way, which is like this, 51. So I can try taking this one out. I have my Hako, which should do a pretty good job taking it out. So I'm going to try that, and then we'll try to piggyback it on there. CXK. You know what? Now that I'm looking at this, it looks like I can use substitutions here. I might have it in stock after all. So this is a Toshiba chips. But this one has a Sony chips, and I think I have that one. Let me double check. It's C CXK. Um, that'll be great news. You know, again, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not familiar with what will be compatible. But this here is a CXK. Let me double check it. CXK 5814. 5814P 35L. Yep, this is a chip. Great. <laughs> I didn't think I had it in stock because this one had Toshiba on it. So these usually come in pairs, I think. So I might have to switch out both of these anyway. Let's see. Toshiba, TMM. And it says to put them over here and they're facing this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just piggyback it by pushing on it. So this is the same one, Sony. Uh, looks like I'm going to put the notch going this way. So I'm going to kind of push it over itself. This one's not as tight, so I'm just going to bend the pins a little bit. Now this is kind of janky, I mean, you know, if you're an expert you can do this, but <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, I bent these a little too much. So they should fit right over there, and then I push it on, okay. So that should stay there, but I'm super paranoid, so I'm not taking that chance. I'm just going to take some electrical tape, kind of put it over both of them, and then stick it somewhere else so it can stay there. You know, so it won't fall out. But again, you know, I could turn it upside down. It'll be fine. So that's there. Now let's put this back on, and we'll see if that made any difference. Okay, so we're back. I put it back in there. You have the Memtest ROM still in, and we'll see what happens when I plug it in. So right now it's going through the Memtest stuff. And I can't remember, was it 51 or 52? It was one of the two. All right, looks like it fixed the problem. So um, I believe it was the second one, so it was 51. So 51 was the issue, it looks like I gotta replace that one. But again, I'm gonna do both of them most likely. I'll let it run one more time. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove the ROMs on the top, put the original ones back in, and see if it corrects the problem. So let's see. All right, so I put the original ROMs back in. Um, that pin, by the way, I um, quickly unbent it using some pliers. It was really easy to do, and uh, it was in pretty good shape, and it popped right back in. So we saved the ROM there. So let's see how it is. So I'm plugging it in. Oh, we got something. Check that out. All right, so we have other RAM issues going on, or some sprite issues, um, which could be EEPROM related. Uh, looks like there's road stuff going on, but at least we had it boot up, so that's great. So let me go into test mode again. I will go into memory test, and let's see what happens. Testing everything. Everything seems good now, so that's a good sign. And we did the RAM test with the extended one, and that was fine. So it's something else that's going on. And I'm not really sure what it would be. So there's a lot of ICs on here um, that are missing. So 
Let's see, we have 133, 132, 118, 117. Those are the ones that you actually remove for the um, um, enhanced ROM set. <laughs> and then, what do we say, 75, 76 were for the other ones. So, there's still other stuff. I mean, there's road ones I can test. Um, looks like it's doubling up the sprites. So I could tell the fact that it's yellow means there's something going on with, with that. All right, so it was that in the mem test. I assume it was the one on the front. So let's let it go back in. Yeah, see it's acting all goofy. You can't see the road, the tile map, something's going on. So let me try starting a game. Just for the heck of it. It's not set to free play, so. Yeah, the sound works. We know that. Get ready. Yep. I wonder if it's a bad bad e prompt. You know what I'm gonna do, I think? I think I'm gonna um, test the rest of them and then come back. So that's good, we got it working a little more. So little by little, we'll get this thing going. So it looks like that has to be done. It was 52 that I had to take out, but I'm gonna replace both. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll um, quickly desolder that and uh, socket it and then put those uh, brand new RAM chips in there. All right, so what I did now is I plugged it in. <clears throat> I swapped the boards. So I took the broken one, actually, the, the untested one where we put the, we piggybacked the RAM is on the bottom. And my good working one is on the top. So I know now it looks exactly the same. And I know that the board on top is working 100%. So it definitely is an issue with the bottom board. Of course, that's actually disappointing because it's harder to work on. I have to keep taking it in and out in order to, to do stuff. But it's exact. It's acting exactly like, like it did with the other stuff. See, exactly the same. So let me go ahead. I'm going to test the RAM here. Yep, it's, it's behaving exactly the same. So the problem is with the bottom board, not with the top board. So we'll do the reverse and we'll see what happens. But right now, it looks like everything is good. Uh, which makes sense because the top board is perfectly fine. So. I'm guessing that the other top board is fine and the bottom board is messed up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I'm going to switch it so that the uh, bottom board is new and good, known working. Um, and then the top one is the question mark one, which I'm not sure. So we'll go do that and we'll see. So again, this one here is the bottom board that's bad with my known working top board fine. So the CPU board is the top board uh, and it looks like it's fine. So. Let me go ahead and do that and we'll come back. Alrighty, so I just plugged it in. It is working perfectly. So the top board on that untested board is perfectly fine and the bottom board is the one that has the issue because this bottom board is the one that is in my current outrun that I know is working perfectly. So right now it's set to free play. Um, looks like this is not the enhanced outrun set. That's how you know it's not my board that's in there because it just sits in here um, and then times out and then goes to here and then just sits there forever like you saw in my last video If you didn't check that out, you can click up here and check it out, but I kind of go through the differences between the two so It looks like it's working fine. I'm going through now and I'm Just driving around yeah, Everything seems fine. I actually checked the road. I checked the ROMs the EPROMs on the top board were all fine I double checked all those kind of like the method we used at the beginning So, so far, so good. So that's great. I have a working board set, 100% that works on the top. The bottom part is the one with the issue. So I need to figure out what's going on there. You know, unfortunately, it's a little harder to diagnose because, you know, it is the bottom board and you have to keep taking it out, uh, especially with piggybacking. It's not as quick, but it is possible. So we're gonna see if we can fix it. Yeah, it seems to be working okay. I'm gonna go to test mode in a minute. 
Let me just get past here, and then I'll just give it a good crash. Right there. Okay. Yo, the sprites look good. All right, so let's go into test mode here and see what's going on. So right now, yep, everything seems fine. The color's gone. Before, it was like a yellow color. So I'm testing all the ROMs. Everything looks good. Okay. I'm really curious now <clears throat> what it's going to do when I go for the other one. Um, under 58. It was only those two that were bad. Um, and the bottom board is good. So it wouldn't matter because even when I do the ROM test, it'll say that the bottom board... This is a top board we're testing. So, yeah, so it doesn't be, make any sense to put in a mem test right now. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, I'm going to kind of poke around a little bit. I'm going to try to figure out what's what. Um, I think I'm going to replace those two things. We can go ahead and do that now. Swap them out so that it's working properly and then kind of take it from there as to see what else is wrong here. Um, but, yeah. So, I'll do some research online as well and we'll come back and try to figure it out. Okay guys, so we're back and what I did was I just put tested okay, that way I know this board. I didn't want to run it across any traces because I don't know if it would interfere with anything, but I put it right on the CPU. So I know that this board is tested okay, it's 100%. I matched it up with my board. Um, I probably later on at some point, um, I will replace this uh, you know, super capacitor here. Um, well, actually I'll put the super capacitor in to replace that one uh, for the high score save uh, kit and I'll also you know, replace the ROMs um, right here, it's, it's these four right here, and this one down here for the enhanced ROM set. And then uh, this will be 100% along with the caps. I'll probably change this cap out for sure because you can see it's kind of like a little wobbly there. Looks like someone else did it to these two other ones because they look kind of new, but I'm going to swap them all out to make them even. And then this board will be 100% backup, which is great. So either way, if I don't get this whole board set working, this is tested okay and it's my backup in case something goes wrong so it should be really cool um, unfortunately though if i have high score saves and i decide to swap this board out with the other one obviously this uh, has a different uh, save on here and it'll have different high scores um, high scores compared to the other one but whatever it is a backup again so i'm really happy that this is 100 percent working so the other thing too is um i really hated that i had to take my board out <laughs> to test stuff that, um, you know, because whenever you take it apart, there's always a risk that you're doing stuff. So now this I can actually use as a test board for my other bottom boards that I that aren't working because I know this works 100%. So, um, you know, I can use this as a, like I said, a test board. So so this one is actually the Sony's that you see here that I piggybacked on here. That's a Sony CX-K5814P as in Paul, dash 35L. So those go right here in uh, IC52 and IC51. So if you guys need to replace these, I'll put it, a, um, not really a link, but I'll put the model number in the description and you can kind of get it wherever you need to go. So they're Toshiba's and these are Sony's. They're direct replacements and they work fine. I know that because like I've said, like you guys saw on the other board that I had, the other Outrun board had the Sony's in there and it worked fine. So, so I'm going to go ahead and take these out. Um, what I'm going to do is I believe it's these two right here. There's one and two. I'm going to put my fingers on them. So it's these two right here. So what I like to do is I'll mark it up with a Sharpie. Kind of just letting myself know exactly what's what. So let me look at it again. It's these two right here. So I'll mark it up so it's one and two. So in between those, I'm going to take all these out and all those out. And I know, you know what, I'm going to put on these glasses, and these, these glasses are awesome. I got these on Amazon. I think they're like 20, 20 bucks or so. Um, they come with different lenses. Here, I'll show you real quick, because I don't really show often what the lenses do, but these are the lenses. It comes with a whole bunch. They range from, it says on here, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and this is 3. Is it? 3.5, actually. So I usually use the strongest one. That way I can see everything, it snaps right in. And what's cool is that, you know, it has the uh, LED light you see on there. And it's adjustable too, you can kind of position it. And it does come with glasses. Let's see if I have them, I'm not sure if I have them on the side, but it comes with glasses that actually snap it on the side here. Um, so they're regular glasses. Here, let me take this out and I'll show you. So it really, it comes with normal glasses, like looks like shades when you put them on. 
But when you have the battery in there, it's fine without it. But if you have the battery for the LED light, it's a little heavy. So it comes with the strap too, which is awesome. So this, you just kind of take it out, pop these in there, and then you adjust it for your head. You don't want to adjust it too tight because then this part will kind of kill your nose there, the bridge of your nose. But, you know, you adjust it perfectly so it feels like you're wearing the glasses and it won't fall off when you're looking down and stuff. So these things are awesome. You can see they're kind of dirty because I use them so much. But um, they are adjustable, fully adjustable here and here. And I'll put a link in the description. Any affiliate links you see in the description actually helps out the channel a little bit. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost me anything. And it actually helps... Um, by using the affiliate link for Amazon, which goes towards uh, Delusional's Arcade, so. And I'm just gonna add some solder. I find on this board, it actually comes out better if you uh, add solder first. So I'm just adding solder to each one, just to make it fresh. Did that work? Yeah. All right. And now I'll take this thing. I'm going to actually tin it a little bit off camera. You can see the smoke again. It's getting sucked away. It's awesome. It's getting a little hot here. All right. Let's see. So. <coughs> I really should use uh, a smaller. Okay, so I have my other soldering iron in here, tip. Um, so it seems to be a little better. I mean, I, I kind of, uh, kind of looking at it here. It's more concentrated, which is great. Some of it still won't come out though. That worked. Now that that's out, I think I can get to this side a little better because that chip was in the way before. So let me try cutting it out. See, yep, way better. I can get in there now. So I'm gonna try cutting near the top. So I'm cutting the legs off. That one just flew out. And it lets you fold this like so, and then grab the rest. So let's see. Yep. All right, I think it's good. So, let me see how many pins this thing is. It's uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So it's twenty-four pin. And I do have sockets. I'm not sure if they're the best, to be honest. Um, I mean, I could get lazy and just put them right there and just put them in. But let me see if I can get them. So these are 24 pins, right? Like you can put these in here. Um, I suggest when you're doing it to either double up that or just put it in here first. And that way, because what'll happen is if you heat it up too much, it'll actually melt the um, plastic and they'll come right out. So a lot of times I'll put it in first. Um, I'll make sure the notch is facing to the left and you kind of just piggy, piggyback them together like that. And then we'll stick it in there like so. Let me get this out of there. Hopefully that'll line up good. And all right, so that's in there nice. And usually I'll put something underneath it to kind of keep it propped up there. So I'm just going to take this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take this little pad that I have here. 
I have like a notepad and it keeps it pressed there it's, it's nice and I have all of them right there and right there so they're all showing through so now I'm just going to solder it on Let's see if you can see that can you see that yeah so that's exactly what I'm doing Let me just aim my light a little better okay I'm going to tin it too Good. Just double checking everything. Yep, it looks nice. All right, so I'm gonna let that cool completely. I've made the mistake of not letting it cool, and you pull it out, and it pulls out all the pins. Real big pain. So I'll leave that on there. Um, the other thing I want to do is get a second one here. Do the same thing. I'm just kind of taking them, putting them together, making sure they're not bent. So the notches are facing the right way, which they are. But this one is a little bent. So I'm just trying to make sure these are all good to go. All right, so those fit in nicely. And I'm going to take those and then put that on the other side here. So let me uh, show you what I'm doing here. That fit in pretty easy. And again, I'm leaving that notepad there so I can kind of push on it. Okay, so it's these right there. It's right where the marker is. See how I put marker? And it's the ones in between. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder these in there. So, all right. So now I'll clean that up later. But those are them, and again, oh, I just I think I just stabbed myself. <laughs> um, these are them right here. Oops. And they're double socketed right now, but um, I'm going to let them cool like really well. So I'm just going to carefully pry it off. I'm not worried about bending the pins on this, but I'm just worried that the other part won't come out. And that looks good. So I can put that in my bin box. And then this one, same thing, just get underneath here. Yeah, the first time I didn't know about putting another socket on, it was awful. All this got all melted. Was, uh, you definitely want something in there to hold the shape. So that's it. These are now socketed. Wow, that looks really good. I'm impressed. <laughs> so now I'm going to stick uh, one of these ram chips in there. And the side that I want to put on is this one. So I'm just getting them in there and that looks like it fit I put this side in first and then the other side I'm gonna kind of massage in there that looks good those are in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this on there um, where I pop the top board that I know is working which is this one on there i'm going to clean it up first actually um before i put this on but i'm going to put the other board on there put it together and uh do that so in the meantime i'm just going to flip it over all right so i'm just taking this and just being generous with it 
Let me know if, in the comments if you want a link to this alcohol stuff, but you could always just look on Amazon. That's where I got mine. It's like 99% alcohol, works really good, evaporates very quickly. It's perfect for this stuff that we're working on here. To go. All right, so I'm taking this, let's zoom out here now, and we'll put this other board on top. Right in here. Press down, one, two, and three. All right, so I'm gonna pop this on the board. I mean, I'm sorry, in the machine, and we'll see if that um, corrected the problem. It's still gonna have some glitches and everything, but um, if it does anything besides the plain black screen we saw at the beginning, then we're good to go, so. Okay, so I have this up and running. Put the new RAM in. It does not have the piggybacks on it anymore. It's all socketed. We're plugging it in, see what happens. Let me turn off my light here. All right, so it looked like that was successful, that transplant. Um, it still has glitches and everything, so I gotta figure out why it's doing that. Uh, but we're one step ahead here, so. Yeah, it looks exactly the same, so. I had the brake on. I'm like, why is it not moving? So yeah, we're having the same issue. So there's something with the color palette. I gotta figure out what it is. Still turns yellow. And let me go ahead and crash here. Okay. And let me go into, let's go into here. Memory tests. And it looks like Oh, it says IC76 is still bad. Is that right? Uh, oh yes, we, we know that's correct. Because um, the board, the bottom board is still bad. So IC76, that's under the ROMs. Um, and it's reporting it as being bad when it's not bad. We know it's not bad. That 76 um, is the actual uh, EEPROM when we tested it good. And then the rest is all good. So that's fine. It looks like 55, no, 51 and 52 are both good. That's the one we just replaced. So that's good. So that's uh, fixed. Now we just got to figure out why it's reporting that. Um, hmm. I don't know. I swapped them out and it wasn't that and I also checked them. So it's something on, this looks like it's a top board. But like we said, it's not the top board because the top board is working fine. So maybe it's something with the ROMs on the second board where the graphics are. Um, so let me take a look. I'll look underneath uh, on my spare board and I'll try to figure out what it is. Okay guys, so I wanted to kind of show you what happened here. Um, I did some more inspection uh, really closely. I must've missed this somehow, but if you look at this side, it looks good. But if you look at the other side, there is a bent pin right here. So it's bent straight on like that. You see how that looks? It looks really bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a pair of pliers here and kind of just bend it out. Um, I actually burned a new one and stuck it in there because I don't know if this is gonna break, but if it does, we could always burn one. Not a big deal. And pretty much just line it up with the rest. And let me see if I can get better angle here. So yeah, it looks good now. So this is the one I just repaired um, where I just unbent it. So I'm gonna stick this back in and um, we'll see. It's OPR10268. I think this has to do with the sub processor. I'm not really sure exactly, uh, but it may be why um, you know we're getting a lot of the glitch graphics there. So let's stick it back in and see if we uh, see any improvement. The, the one with the bent leg was this one over here. I popped that back in. Uh, tested it once I unbent it into, in my reader and I compared it to an actual ROM and it, it actually worked fine. You can use MAME if you want to compare ROMs or you can use um, that other ROMident and I'll put that link in the description too. It's a really cool site. So after you um, dump it, you can just compare it online and it's neat because it'll tell you the region like these here are all, I believe this is all graphics one region. And um, you know, we'll see how it looks. Uh, we're gonna pop it in there right now and we'll check it out to see how it goes. All right guys, so I just turned it on, I straightened out that pin, and it looks like it did something. I have road now. <laughs> That's good. That's really a good thing. I'm actually, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see. So 
Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So first, you know, we turned it on. It was a black screen. We um, put those RAM chips in there, uh, put the sockets, and it turned out, you know, we piggybacked them first just to review. Uh, figured out that was the problem, socketed them, put brand new ones in, fixed the problem for some of it, where it booted up. Now we have this where we unbent that pin, and it looks good. I can see the background over here. I can see the sprite of the car is a little messed up. There's certain things. That, to me, says that there's some RAM chips that are corrupt. Um, the text looks like it's fine for the high score. Um, all this here down here is all right too, and that, you know, text for that. So it looks like the text is fine. Uh, it's just having problems with other things, and I'm looking at the palm trees. Some of them are messed up, the signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check um, again, you know, those pins on the uh, other EPROMs that are on there, and we'll, you know, check those on the side too. I'll make sure they're fine. Okay, guys, so I discovered something. Um, I actually was trying to drip, uh, bridge some more chips here uh, just to see, you know, the Toshibas and, uh, you know, just by shotgunning it just to see if that worked. And I discovered um, one of the errors that it said, if you recall, see, you see how I like tried to piggyback them. So I'm still trying to figure that out. And while I was inspecting the board, I saw that right over here. Uh, it says IC 74 and 75. I think 74 was the one they said was, was bad. Um, so I'm like, okay, you know, I can take a spare one I have from another board. But then when I flipped it over, just to check stuff out, you know, with all these circuits here, um, there were some that were crossed over. So I actually used this little thing. Let me see where my thumb is, if I can get it there. Okay, can you see this? You see how they're touching each other? They're not supposed to be touching each other, like, right here. Um, so... I'm going to unbend all these um, because they're not supposed to be touching. So something's going on where it's basically bridging stuff that it's not supposed to be bridging. So I took off a whole bunch on this area over here where the chips were. I'm going to go through the whole board now and I'm going to kind of take these away and then see if that fixes the problem. And if it does, um, I think we fixed the board. But uh, I guess in storage, you know, these things stuck together. So we're going to kind of take it out and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is kind of just lift them up. I'm going to get my magnifier here. So I'm just using this tool here to kind of take them out of the way, not bend them, not scratch the board. <laughs> so yeah, so hopefully, you know, I'll go through each row. And I didn't see any more over here. This one's bent, but it's not touching anything, so it's fine. This one I can stand to bend a little more. Um, let's see. All right. I don't see any more in this section. All right. So I'm going to stick this back in and see. That could have been the problem right there. But let me inspect the rest of the board, and then um, we'll just cut right to trying it out and seeing if it works. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you guys that I do have it in here, I put the board in. Um, I found some bent pins actually, I looked it over even more and I found some near where the mask ROMs were. So I was kind of suspecting maybe the mask ROMs were bad, um, but they weren't. It turned out the back had the same thing that the other ones did that I just showed you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and test it now, I'm actually going to set it all up here. And let's see if it makes any difference. So I'll turn it on now. And look at that. It's working. 100%. That is awesome. So it looks like we fixed it, guys. Really happy to see that. Um, I was driving myself crazy. I was actually swapping chips left and right, piggybacking them. Uh, the ones I had on hand, and uh, none of it was working, so it wasn't really making any difference. And then I said, let me um, double check the pins again on the back, and I found some that were touching. Took them out, checked the rest of the board meticulously to make sure it was good, and here we are. Awesome. So let me go ahead and make sure it's working all right. I'm going to start a quick game here. Let's raise the volume a little bit. Let's see. Yep. So far, so good. So you can see the graphics look okay. They were scaling a little weird. 
Uh, the cars are fine, the trucks are fine. Game is working properly. <clears throat> Let me see, yep, I just crossed over, it's vibrating, so that's great. Man, I'm really happy. <laughs> So, you know, each time we repair a board, we learn more, right? So, and I have a lot of the chips on hand, so this is definitely not going to be the first one that I'm repairing here. Great. Let's see how far we can get without crashing. Once I crash, I'll stop here. Yeah, so far, so good. This is awesome. So far I'm having a perfect run. I'm at kilometers because it doesn't have the installed, uh, the enhanced kit installed. So I'm going at 293 kilometers per hour, which is the maximum. All right, so I crashed. <laughs> Excellent. It's working great. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to end this on a good note. Let's, uh, you know, end this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, you can see the link down here. Um, I have links in the description, which are affiliate links, which always helps out the channel. Um, and of course, let me just actually stop this here. Yeah, I had the thing pressed down. There we go. So, um, yeah, so subscribe. Also, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Um, you're going to want to see there's a contest going on um, currently. Uh, it ends on the 30th of June uh, where you can enter and you have to go to Aaron's site, which is Crafty Mech. He's actually, we're doing a giveaway for his five year anniversary for the TPG. That's the test pattern generator that you see that I've been using in the videos. You can see it right here. Um, so, yeah, so go ahead and do that. It's all free, it's going to be shipped directly to you from him. So, it's really awesome that he was willing to do that for his five year anniversary and also for, you know, celebrating and giving back to you guys because I like paying it forward. So that's it. Um, Instagram is also an option too as well. I always post stuff on there, kind of little hints of what I'm working on. And um, thanking you guys, I'm really grateful. And again, just to thank you guys for everything that you've been doing, we're paying it forward with this giveaway, so I'm really happy. So you'll see the link up here where you can click on the video and it kind of tells you about it. Um, or you can just go straight to Twitter and follow me there and you'll see I have it pinned on my account there where you can click on the link and just enter. There's multiple ways to enter um, and it's really fun. So, okay guys, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Really stoked that it works. It's so awesome. <laughs>